Hey everyone, a bit of a different video today. I just took part in my first game jam ever and I wanted to share the process. It all started when one of my good friends, Celeste, informed me that this game jam was taking place and invited me to join her team. Her team being her and a friend. They're both studying game design in university and so our strengths were well balanced. Celeste was more proficient with environment design, her friend was better at gameplay design and I was more specialized in coding. I was super stoked, so I accepted her invitation and she sent me the details. The first thing I noticed is that, unfortunately, we weren't free to use whichever game engine we wanted. Rest in peace Unity. But instead, the jam demanded that we use Soba. I had never heard of Soba, but I thought it couldn't be too bad, right? We were going to have 3 days to make the game and there was a prize pool for the best games created. $300 for the first place, $150 for the second and $50 for last. We noticed that not a lot of teams signed up for the jam and so we decided to go hard and aim for the podium and earn a part of that cash prize. Since I was in the middle of studying my midterms at the time, I kind of forgot that we signed up for this jam until the day before it started when our group chat started texting about it. I decided to start looking into Soba a bit to learn what we were working with and well, it wasn't what I was expecting at all. Soba is made to make mobile games, which is fortunate because that's kind of what I'm learning in my free time. However, the positive sides ended there. Soba is a no-code engine, meaning it only works with visual scripting. If you don't know what visual scripting is, it's basically a way to make games without code. Remember when I said coding was my specialty? Yeah, this got me a bit worried because I had never tried visual scripting before. Another downside, Soba is a mobile app. That meant we'll have to develop the whole game on our phones. But unfortunately, these realizations came too late, I had already committed. And besides, even if it wasn't really what I was expecting, a game jam with friends was still going to be fun anyways. Just a quick note, while I do express a lot of criticism for Soba during this video, keep in mind that it's still in very, very early access, so most of the things I'm saying will be fixed and improved in the future. Already thinking of all the neck pain I was gonna get from spending so much time on the phone, I started looking into ways to get Soba onto my PC. I found an Android emulator that did a pretty good job and installed that. Eventually, the starting day of the game jam came. We were all eagerly waiting for the theme of the game we were going to have to make to be revealed. Sweat dripping from our foreheads. And... Obby. What the f*** is Obby? Everybody in the team was confused. Nobody knew what Obby was. I did a quick search, but all I could find about it was Roblox references, which got me worried. That was until Celeste posted this. So basically, Obby means an obstacle race. With that theme much clearer in our heads, there was no time to waste. We made a shared Google Docs to start putting our ideas together and we built a plan. First off, the setting. Uh, at first we were aiming to make the game look like it was in space. Of course, since we were going for that sweet, sweet cash money, we had to make sure that our game was better than everyone else's. So we gathered inspiration from our favorite obstacle race games like Fall Guys and also Fall Guys. One of the main takeaways we got from our inspiration from Fall Guys is that we wanted to make sure that there's multiple different paths you can take, each with a varying degree of difficulty, like taking a hard path can be faster if you don't make mistakes, but an easier path will be longer. Our master of gameplay started sketching out the different types of jumps we could make. While they were talking design, I started experimenting with the visual scripting of Soba. Unfortunately, not even 5 minutes in, we figured out another major issue. It's impossible for multiple people to work on the same project at once. Unfortunately, only one person was going to be able to work on the game, which was unplanned and frankly a bit disappointing. In light of this new roadblock, we had to rethink our plan. I was going to build the obstacles, following our gameplay plan. After that, I would pass on the files to Celeste so she could work on the aesthetic. During my experimentation with the engine, I played around and tried to make a space sky. Unfortunately, Soba really didn't make it easy to make something look exactly the way we want, which made it impossible to make a space sky. This alone pretty much prevented us from making our game space themed, so we decided to switch up our idea so that we wouldn't lose too much time. We ended up with a three-level concept, starting in a mine environment, then going into a grassy garden type of place and ending in a castle in the sky. 
Our gameplay specialist modeled what the obstacles were going to look like in Blender, and with all that planification work done, day one of the jam came to an end. I woke up on day two and started building the course following the plan provided. After looking at a very few documentation available for Soba, I got a bit more comfortable working with it. However, it seemed that not every team managed to get familiar with the engine. We heard of a couple of teams giving up, which boosted our confidence. After all, less competition meant more chances for us to get on the podium. Most of day two was spent on building the course and working on some basic logic. For example, falling brings you back to the start of the layer and makes you lose some points. Also, that big pink bubble you see is a graphic bug from the app. I think it's caused by the emulator and not Soba. Don't mind it. Also, for those wondering, this is what visual scripting in Soba looks like. There's no research bar for scripting nodes or anything. It's pretty painful to use. At the end of day two, here's what we had. A pretty basic course, but it wasn't finished and only one day remained. I woke up pretty late on day 3 and I saw that we only had 5 hours to finish everything before it was time to submit our game. We decided that since I was the most familiar with the whole course, I was going to start decorating and someone else was going to finish the obstacles. So I started with a cute little forest in the beginning area of the course and then moved on to the mines. Unfortunately, due to the extremely limited library of assets Soba forces us to use and the inability to import our own, there wasn't much I could do to embellish the mines. I put a few crates and barrels here and there and moved on to the garden layer. For the garden, I had a lot more assets that were fitting. I started with a small pine forest with flowers and rocks. Then I put a cute little apple tree on one of the platforms. I ended with two tall pines near the castle entrance and a stone pathway. At this point, I transferred the files to the team so they could finish up the castle area. After they had finished the course, they handed it back to me and I quickly added the finishing touches while the time ticked down. Despite the jam coming to an end, only 14 other teams have submitted a game and we finally submitted ours. And here's what our finished game was looking like. Um, the frame rate is terrible and that's due to Soba being generally unoptimized, so don't mind that. We start off in our mine area. Picking up at least five coins during the whole course will unlock a special vault at the end of the course. Every second that passes, the score is reduced and every time we fall, we lose five points. After the mines, we come up in this garden section. Upon picking up the trophy, we get access to double jumps, so we can make more complex jumps. After finishing up this section, we come up to the final section, the castle. The castle unlocks the dash, which lets us jump very far. And you can see here, since I picked up at least 5 coins in the whole course, at the end we see that this vault is open and we can use the chest to collect our bonus points. With this submitted, the only thing left to do was wait for the results. After 5 stressful days of wait, we finally got the results and... We got second place! I was very happy with that. My friends and I split the money equally, 50 bucks each. That's pretty nice. Anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about this week. Even though my first jam wasn't exactly like I expected it, I still had fun with friends and hey, we won some money, can't complain. Um, a mobile devlog should be coming next Monday. I've been working on the game a lot, so hopefully I should have enough content to give you a devlog next week. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!